Hey, what's up guys? Phil Bailey from Modern Masterpiece. Today I'm going to be talking about AutoCAD to Rhino to laser cutting. And I've got a few cameras on. And let me go ahead and get this going. So I actually have three cameras. I'm on Periscope Live. I am on Google Hangouts Live, and now I'm here on Sony. Uh, looks like there's no SD card in the camera, so let me put an SD card in here. Give me one extra second. Get the tech bag going. Um, if you're just joining, hang tight. I'm going to be showing you the laser cut process, everything that we went through. All right, the Tumi Tech bag. So again, if you guys are watching this on the replay, I'm going to go over the process of going from AutoCAD to Rhino to the laser cutter because I've been doing this for the last 10 weeks and I can tell you 10 weeks even seems like a very long time but I have learned a lot in that if you have a client who needs something you know immediately um, you you end up developing a very fast workflow to help you get things done let's see if I have enough space on this card here So in front, as I'm kind of getting everything together, this is a paper model. I just use like some sixteenth of an inch, uh, like material board, not material board, but some kind of material. And um, it was just to give me an idea of, you know, what the end result is going to be. Um, I've got some reflective material like a mirror that I'm going to use in a few of my parts and um, very excited to see the end results. Looks like we're just about ready for the Sony cam. Get the tech bag out of the way. All right, so we're rolling now on Periscope, YouTube via Google Hangouts and on the Sony action cam. So like I said, this is the test model here. And basically what I had to do was take a project Church of the Light, Japanese architect. Uh, we had to, you know, trace his work. We had to abstract it, make it our own. We ended up doing this uh, this line work here, which essentially is this. You can see that had to eventually create this line work, and the line work became a CAD model, and that CAD model became a Rhino model, which was then modified. And now I'm doing you know form models here to kind of test my theory. My theory is basically of Gestalt theory, where if you look at it from the top, the different different angles. You know, you know, parallel lines, and then you've got these nice angles where when you look at it from the top, you can kind of imagine those beams of light kind of um, going all across the surface. And here in this bag, I have some parts that I cut, and I'm going to actually show you guys the, um, uh, the big baseboard that has all the material on it, and I'm going to actually show you, like here on the TV, I have uh, an image that I photographed on a black background showing the, you know, reflective back. Some of the pieces here, the same model, I just kind of photographed it because I wanted to show um, an overemphasized mirror um, image. So when you're walking through the space in the real world, you would actually see um, lots of reflection, lots of light, different angles, the way that the sun hits it it's all going to give you a different look. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to bring up the uh, um, 
I'm going to actually bring up the baseboard and I'll show you how all these parts play. For those of you on YouTube, here is some of the parts that I have. Let me go ahead and clean this off. Let's put that model back there. That goes in the tech bag. <laughs> All right. Now, should probably move off uh, the mouse as well. See how much of that you can. Fifteen minute mark. All right. I really want to cover anything up. Okay. So this video is not very organized. As you can see, it's mostly for me to get an idea of my build quality to see if the laser cut actually did a, you know, see see if my skills were were legit in this process. Um, so here is my main baseboard. I've got a lot of etching. I have some holes cut through here and all of these different pieces are going to fit in there. Now I didn't throw away the pieces that were cut out. I didn't throw away any of this stuff. I'm all about reclaiming the material. These are perfect quarter inch pieces that I could use potentially on projects. Why would I throw these away? This is material that I had to pay for. So I'm literally going to be able to use this for the future. And I can see here, if this is the material that came out of it, not everything is a perfect fit. So what I'm going to have to end up doing is finding a way to wedge. Looks like there's just a, a very thin piece I would have to wedge in there. So I'm going to take a strip of material. This actually might be too thick, but I'm going to take little strips of paper and material so I can do some test fits there to see what thickness would I actually need to use. And they're going to be really, really small strips because they don't want us to see any, they don't want to see any glue. Um, because that's not very professional. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reveal the board first. Now they put this tape. This is all tape over the top of this. They put tape on there to prevent the laser from creating these different burns in the material. I'm actually going to have a seat. and move this keyboard out of the way. I got way too much tech. Way too much tech. Let's put the keyboard aside. That should be good for YouTube. All right. And yeah, if you guys are on Periscope, follow me on YouTube at me, Phil JB. All right, let's do this. What's up, what's up? So as I was saying, what they did is they put this piece of tape. You can see some of these burn marks. This tape is so that way um, you, you're not going to have as much burn and like ash that would have to be washed off. The worst thing that I might have to do is sand a few of the edges. But what I'm going to do right here right now is reveal the actual... You can see that there as I'm coming across. I'm just going to take some of this off of here. Now, they did a very good job. Very good job. I mean, that contrast is just ridiculous. It's very clean, very clean lines. Um, the guy that did it, his name is Bart from. Um, 
I believe it's Digital Fab PDX. So I'll have to uh, put that company in my final video. I'm going to edit all this down anyways. But yeah, I'm just taking off the tape here. You can see how clean. I'm very, very happy with the build quality of this product. I mean, to think that a laser cut through all of this with a 0 .001 decimal precision, that is just incredible. He said that he recommends using your fingernails to get this tape off of these small areas because you don't want to scratch the material anymore. I'll just go ahead and toss that to the side of the box. Nice and clean. I mean, it is just it is just ridiculous how clean this is. You can see some of these uh, some of these etch lines here. Just just amazing. Here's actually a little a little form that I created so that way I can actually well with the right material. I think this is for uh, eighth of an inch material, but I'd be able to actually place the items in there to glue so I use this as a, a little form get all of those out of the way and I was anticipating having to do a little bit of sanding so you know that's not that's not the worst news at all. And you can see how everything just pulls right off nice and easy. Very happy with the results so far. Um, total time it took to laser cut was about about two hours. That includes masking the boards, that includes switching out the materials on the machine. That all took a little bit of time but it's just cool how every single piece is cut nice and precise part of that was me and my AutoCAD I mean I'm the one that actually drew the lines the laser is the one that actually did all the easy work I just followed the instructions I said look these are the lines that I want this is what you're gonna cut and what Bart was explaining to me was sometimes you have an idea that, okay, we want to put this in a eighth inch hole or a quarter inch hole. Well, if the material is not actually a quarter of an inch, you're going to run into issues because it's not going to be a perfect fit. So each, each piece is going to have its different, uh, different issues of does it fit, does it not fit. And that's what we want to test. Um, I don't believe I have the pieces cut for this yet, uh, so I will probably have to do this early, early next week on my day off. But what I do have, and I'll kind of move the mouse out of the way. What I do have, though, is going to be... All of these pieces that are wedges got that Phil Bailey etched in there see if there's any Perry people on there no Perry people okay all right So here's here's one piece. I'll get it right into the camera. So this piece here, as you may have guessed, fits right here. Um, and we have another piece on a different thickness, which actually should be the exact same dimensions. 
and oh, would you look at that. So we're gonna have a reflective mirror piece on the top and it's gonna be raised off of this base plane here. Uh, and this is gonna represent my water. So that's gonna be interesting. So the first thing we're gonna do is reveal going to reveal the, the, uh, the wood grain here and this tape is really on there it's like such a precise cut love that grain and even in this now these etches on here these etches are to help me to align other pieces that are going to be mounted on top of this. Okay. Go that away. Here's some other pieces. These were, looks like, cut out of, I think, black acrylic. All right. So this piece literally goes right over like this. It just goes right edge to edge. Now what I could have done in the future is to make it a perfect puzzle fit, I could have cut all the way through and made this material be a lot thicker. So now this is raised, and what I like is because the edges are burnt, it's actually going to give me a lot of contrast. And now what I'm going to do is take the mirror piece, which goes right on top so I can get that camera to stay. Let's see if we can angle this a little bit. All right. So we're gonna now reveal the mirror. Now this is really cool stuff. Look at that. I find an easy way to do all this stuff with one hand. Now generally I'd want to leave this on here till the final model, till the final build. But honestly, I think there's something that was scraped on the bottom of it. You know, it doesn't have to be 100% good. It's it's pretty good. Oh look, there's me. Doesn't have to be 100. Let me set this camera down here. Is kind of making that a little bit difficult. So yeah, we'll just take this off of here. And also, again, for the edges. I'm actually going to be going to work pretty soon. Yeah, this is beautiful, guys. Look at that. So there's the etching. Now that's going to go like this over the top of that. Again, all that's going to go on top of here. And so far, so good. I mean, I'm actually really, really impressed by this. I think that's going to look great. Same thing with this section over here, this section. If I move the camera just a little bit. This is going to have the same, same thing. So 
so far so good. But and I don't want to do the whole thing right now. I'm only going to do really the test fitting of most of these parts. But the aesthetic of the way that the edges of this are nice and dark because they're burned and you can actually still see some of the grooves from that is very very precise so we're gonna uh oh oh i got there's my 30 minute mark two different sides so again that's gonna just fit right here Just like that. <laughs> so, so far this is already looking really badass. I wanna take a couple of pictures with the phone. Just so I can show Capture. Capture. My voice recognition doesn't want to work. Hoo hoo hoo. Yeah, so that's good. That looks really, really good. So here's a sample. You guys can see the edge of the material um, this represents the pool the water and I'm going to use the pieces that were cut and they're going to go in these different slots here so now I'm going to just do a real quick test fit and then what I was just showing is um, how the wood is raised and all the different edge lines helps me to determine where things are going to get lined up for example this is a pathway um, so yeah, now I'm going to reveal this, which is part of the mirror. And that's going to go right on top just like that. So we're going to go ahead and get that going. If you guys are on YouTube, definitely subscribe. Periscope, Google Hangouts, Twitter. And here's this. I'm actually going to take a little, little video of that. Nice and perfect fit. Like I said, it's literally within point zero zero one. I absolutely love that. That way you can see how clean it is. This is definitely my best model so far. And it should be, you know, this is a 30 is technically like a third year or second second to third year program. It's a 300 level class. So yeah, it's gonna be tough. Anyways, let's get down to the nitty gritty of the parts. And we're gonna do that. In this area. So, move the camera back over here. All right. So all these pieces in this bag are labeled to go in these different slots. Um, again, you've already seen the mirrors. We're working our way this way. 
um, just to do some basic test fitting, figure out how much of you know these little strips do I need, and do I need to add any kind of extra spacers um, just to make it fit better, and to keep it all. I want it to be a very a very tight fit. Um, so let's go ahead and open up one of these bags figure out where it goes because what I had to do I'll set this down oh this looks pretty cool you see how clear that is nice so each of these pieces has a part number this is P2 A09, which means it is the ninth piece on here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This is most likely that piece, and look, it fits right there. Now it's not a super tight fit, but it's pretty tight. And, and this is the way that the fabrication goes. I know what each piece is going to be because it is labeled, and I had to do that all in Rhino. I actually did this manually. This part here is P2A13. I'm going to just take a quick photo of this before and after so I can show pictures of my progress of the model. P2A13. Now, I'm going to peel off. the masking tape anything else needs to be scraped off with the fingers this looks super cool as a part it looks really really cool and this is probably the most rewarding part for me is actually getting to reveal actually let me I should share this link on Facebook in case anybody um, type an F for Facebook whoa I'll share it both here that would be live. And I'll post it to my personal. Twenty seven posts on Facebook. That's ridiculous. All right. Like I said, if you guys are watching this during a replay, definitely subscribe if you want to see more of what I'm doing. This is super freaking cool. Um, you can clearly see the part number etched in there. Now the professors, they are huge sticklers for, that's beautiful. They're huge sticklers for precision and cleanness. So they don't want anything that's going to look ghetto. You know, you can't be having no El Elmworth blue just blotted on there. Get to this camera here. The acrylic smells really weird. Just capture a photo there for the assembly. All right. Yeah, so part number P2, which is this, planter 2. This is planter 1 in the back, planter 2, um, and then you have like mass 1, mass 2. Each piece, each section has a piece. And you can see the etch line. That etch line is so that way I know the thickness of the material is going to be a quarter inch thick. So what I did was I figured out what part I was going to have and how high it was going to be. That is going to determine 
oh yeah, put in an extra quarter inch. So when I put it into that slot, it's gonna be standing straight up. Now this is part A13, which is the 13th piece. So in order to make this happen, so to figure out where this piece goes, it says P2 A13. That means that it's gonna be, A is on the top here. And it's gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Third from the bottom, I can see the groove there and it's gonna go just like that, right into that slot. Now obviously, it wiggles. But you know, you wanna know what I appreciate about this particular material? is it is so clear in the store i did not know it was going to be this clear it is so clear that it literally adds an extra dimension to the model now what happens if i put a piece of mirror you know say behind that that's that's going to make it even more cool you know so as i'm going through this fabrication process i can actually see what i can do now this part here is a7 so that's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's going to go right there. This piece here is six. We've got um, piece number eight. So I believe that's going to be the longest piece here. Um, I might as well test fit all these. This one is going to be piece number two. Uh oh. P2A02. That should be this one. Oh, you know what? Again, this is why I have the etch mark because I was thinking it doesn't fit. It does fit. It has to be the right orientation. This one is piece number three. Um, this is going to be piece number four. That makes it very easy. And um, piece number five. And Bart actually put all the pieces in order in the bags. Very, very well organized. I'm very, very impressed with their services. They made it so easy to do this project. If it wasn't for them knowing what they're doing, it probably wouldn't have been as easy to do. Part number 12, I can just kind of eyeball that. Part number 11, obviously it's gonna go up behind that one. And then part number 10. And we've got three more pieces. We've got part number 15, which is the last piece. Part number 14, which obviously must be this one. And then part number one. Boom. There is the model and as I'm looking through it from different angles, it just looks, it just looks amazing. Uh, let's see here. If I were to put my phone on top of this, nice and straight. Very cool. So just to get an idea. I can see through it. I'm probably not going to use all these photos in the progress because I'm actually going to do a final. I'm going to do a final fabrication. Um, what I just did was fit everything into these different slots here, and what I was showing is each piece has a part number. So this part is P two A zero one, which is the first piece of. P, which is planter, planter, um, planter A, which is the top piece. So I'll peel all these back here so I can see through it. Back side. So right now I'm just peeling the uh, masking tape and you can just see, I mean, that just looks like a nice little block there. 
Um, this is my first project of, of its kind. I'm gonna leave all of the characters, I'm gonna say facing to the right because I don't want it to, um, I don't want it to be exposed to the back. I'm gonna cut a little shim and see if no, that looks like that's gonna to be too big. I'm gonna cut a little shim so I can see if this will fit in there better. But um, what I was explaining earlier is these pieces here, this is actually a pool um, represented by a mirror, and I've got another one um, over here which is kind of nice because the material looks really really good so I'm gonna put this is gonna be kind of hard to do words facing to the right we're gonna place our shim in there uh oh that didn't work out too well did it let me just do it the easy way first I'll do it like this If I use that sheet of paper, that does make it a, a much tighter fit, definitely. So what I might want to do is either place a piece of tape on the inside of the sections. That way it will be easier to stick in there. I could glue it in there. Not really sure, but I, I definitely want it to be a good fit. This right here is just preliminary. I have to take photos to show my progress. So that's what I'm doing right now, is just kind of getting an idea before I go to work. Does this stuff actually fit? Uh, this took me about 10 weeks all together. And you can see there, it looks like a premium product. So I'm very thankful for that. Yeah, I'm trying to just see if I place the paper in there. What I could probably do, place the paper in there, and then I can probably just use like an X-Acto to cut it. That way it's not visible. For now, I'll leave those, but you know, you can see through this from all sides. Now, this is gonna be even more cool because, let's see. We've got M101, it's gonna start here from left to right, or sorry, right to left. It's early. And so the fabricators were nice enough to keep everything in these bags by part. And uh, that makes it very helpful for me because I did my job of labeling each section. Uh, Per, I labeled each section per this map here, um, and that just shows, you know, two, three, where's four, four somewhere in here. But having a map, having direction to follow, makes this process very easy. Now what I can do is reveal these. I can just do a test fit. So M101 should be this right here. And I can tell that what happened was um, this material is actually uh, 16th and these slots are 8th. So I'm gonna have to recut these. I'm gonna have to recut these because yes, they will fit, this is part number four. Yes, it will fit, but it is actually the wrong thickness. And that's just because I assumed that this clear material that I had was eighth of an inch. But, you know, if I had, let's just do this. If it was an eighth of an inch, take two of these pieces together. 
if it was an ace, it's, it would be a much tighter fit. Absolutely, it would be a tighter fit. It might even be almost too tight if it was an ace. And that's part of the process there. Yeah. Okay. So what I can what I can what I can do is Oh yeah, and it still has the tape on it. So this is M1. Definitely looks beautiful, you know, and that's just going to be nice and clear and see, I'll have a black background or a mirror background. Which I want to do a little photograph here. Capture. So yeah, I could see that being good. Uh, obviously taking the photography is gonna be a bit challenging. And what I even thought about doing is making this whole entire board, the mirror finish, so you'd have the mirror with the glass and then everything would be lit from underneath so yeah these need to be recut as eighths but what i can do is i can test fit these obviously the pools work nice and fine those are great but let's move this out of the way Here's a piece, which actually would be something like this. So this one doesn't actually have a part number, but I know where it goes. Because I even thought about making this base material black, since this is opaque no light is going to come through this material and it has a nice clean look and it would in some way be reflective so we wanted that reflection in there so yeah that looks beautiful It's got a little bit burnt on the back side. So that's that piece. And it literally goes starts here. and would eventually overlap like that. See, this is just all preliminary stuff. Now these I'll keep together because I know that they are the wrong piece. And what I can even do is, because these pieces are already cut, I could just create a new base model and recut all the holes convert these into sixteenths instead of eighths. 
that would be an easy fix. So the gap in between each one is going to be a little bit larger, but I wouldn't have to cut these a second time because if I'm already going to cut another base, potentially, it doesn't make a lot of sense to cut both unless I'm going to alternate between black and clear. So that would be something to keep in mind, and I'll just keep all of those pieces together. And what we're going to do is really focus on... We're going to focus on this section behind here. We know that these fit perfectly, all the right size. Let's see, this is going to be P2B8. So when I think that's going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It does, you know, again, pretty much a perfect fit. So it's going to go one through eight this way. So here's six. So six, seven, eight. Wait a second. It's going to be this one. So yeah, let's do that reveal. And I'll probably want to like wipe down all the parts, make them nice and clean. So that way, when I do the photographs, it'll be nice and perfect. So, again, we're going to keep the words to the inside. Eleven thirty. I've got an hour to get to work, so I really need to leave here in about twenty minutes. So that looks pretty good. Some of you guys know that I've been working on building my own shipping container Lego blocks. And now that I know how this fabrication works, I could literally do that as long as I do some prototyping to get the test fits right. So I'm going to use probably neo magnets so you can just stick everything together with the magnets. So yeah, I'm going to want to spend some time to clean all these different blocks. Make sure it's nice and clean. And yeah, I like the contrast of this. This is nice. So no light comes through here. Light will come through here. And light's going to come through this mass one, but not on the other planter section. So, so far, so good. This is number one. And see with the with the paper on there, that's actually like a perfect fit with that paper on there. So I could probably use black or white artist tape and just use a few layers of that. And that's probably going to help out quite a bit. And in the future, if I have larger parts, I'm going to I'm going to label each part um, underneath instead of 
on the actual part. Yeah, so that's a pretty good fit. That's almost a perfect fit, actually. Funny. Funny, funny. All right, guys, let me end this hangout here.